Right now, I have a clip, a very little short clip from a short film that I was the cinematographer on about a month ago. I was hired to DP this little short film. Uh, we briefly looked at it on my review of the Godox TL60 RGB tubes, the one about creating room tone. Okay, it was that um, experimental short film that was shot on a stage, uh, the, you know, the Brechtian one. And we're going to be looking at that at a lot in, in the near future. And that's just because the director producers gave me permission to use it as much as I want here on the YouTube, which is always cool. So we're going to be using a clip of that because I did shoot it in R3D RAW full sensor 6k uh, uh, so we're gonna jump into and I'll show you premiere and I'll show you the first thing why I cannot stand dealing with r3d raw in premiere okay so I literally just loaded this clip into premiere pro I mean I hope you guys can see as well as I can see right away this is one of the biggest issues this is clearly not the log image okay this is clearly um, you know this is what premiere does so what happens the way the way Red Digital packs the R3D raw codec, uh, codec onto, you know, the little Angel Bird cards, right, is whatever, whatever LUT you're using to monitor with on the day, your exposure LUT, whatever LUT you are using on the day, it's going to be packed into the same folder of every file, every clip, right? And the way Premiere Pro interprets that file, it automatically will slap the LUT onto the log footage. Well, on top of that, Premiere Pro puts their own Rec 709 look on top of the LUT. So you're essentially right out the gate looking at all of your footage with two LUTs slapped on, okay? Now, if you're like a director or producer completely ignorant to the whole world of R3D RAW and you don't know that, you, well, you're going to start, then you're going to start pushing and pulling your footage with two LUTs essentially slapped onto it, never dealing with the true RAW codec. Uh, and essentially that is what is getting this pathway where it really starts getting warped. Premiere Pro is, it, it, color grading in Premiere Pro is very juvenile, in my opinion, compared to the amount of features that you get in Resolve, okay? So you're limited on top of working on top of two LUTs. And you're, it, that it leads to trouble very rapidly fast, okay? And people that are outside of the camera world, they keep destroying footage, okay? And, and, and it's, it's really uh, embarrassing as a cinematographer, right? Especially when, you know, some of your work is being destroyed because people don't realize what they're doing, okay? And especially for all of my people out there watching who are freelance cinematographers and maybe you, you don't want to leave Premiere Pro, uh, and you're dealing with R3D raw codec, I would beg of you just give Resolve a try and you're going to see why today. So looking at this, this is clearly, uh, it, has, it has the look applied. So I could ima imagine if you were like a, a producer or a director, someone way outside of the camera world and you you don't know, right? And, and then you go, wow, this looks great, right? And they're like, yeah. And you know what? I always hate it when, when people go, yeah, it hasn't even been color graded yet. And it's like, well, it kind of has, there's a LUT applied to it. And if you're working with Premiere, not only is the LUT applied, they've also tweaked, they've also layered on their own little crappy Rec 709 look. Yeah, it, it technically is graded, man. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I just like, there, there's so many things um, that, that grind my gears when working in the freelance world. Um, so if you are producing or directing, folks, I beg of you, let your DP look at the grade, right? Please. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't do that anyways, because that is our work. Right. I know people get excited because like, oh, yeah, we made this thing. It's like, dude, like you do realize that in the in the big world of Hollywood, in normal Hollywood, there is a whole nother there is a whole nother department that is color grading the projects. And the DP is usually sitting in there with them. OK, um, you know, because that's that has our name on it, man. <laughs> you know, so anytime I see something where, you know, nobody let me sign off on the grade, I oh, I instantly my stomach turns because it's like, oh, boy, because I know it, it it's not going to be to the potential that it that it could be. Right. Um, and I am no color greatest by any means. But if if it just by knowing a little bit about it would be loads better than someone trying to deal with it in Premiere Pro, okay? Um, for all the things I've already mentioned earlier. Okay, so here it is right in here. Okay, so we can get in here and look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here you can see all of my settings on the day, red, wide, gamut, RGB, and here you go right here. Creative LUT, this is the LUT. I use the Juan Malara Komodo to Alexa LUT, okay? No file. Boom, instantly right there. So this is what I'm saying. If someone that doesn't know what the hell they're doing, they didn't know to go in there and do that, that's what starts happening. On top of the fact that um, Premiere puts their own look. Now it looks like they changed it because you used to be able to scroll down here and the gamma curve, um, th this right here, the color space, this used to always be Rec 709. 
uh, before, like when I first got the red. So I used to have to always tell like directors and clients, I work with like, please scroll to the bottom and go to color space and change that to red wide gamut RGB. But it looks like they've you know, like Premiere finally caught on. Maybe enough people complained about that. I don't know. But either way, like that's the prime primary reason right there. People don't realize like, oh man, the Premiere is automatically applying that LUD. Okay, so this is where to me, I believe the trouble lies, right? So normal producers, directors out there in, in the low budget world uh, have never taken a course or anything or don't never played around with R3, R3D RAW before ever in their life. They're never gonna know to go into this source mode here and do what I did and turn off that LUT that we were monitoring with on the day. So that's already on there. Now, what they're gonna do, they're gonna do their edit and premiere and then they're gonna go over here to the little Lumetri color tab and they're gonna go, hmm, input LUT, none? wait, I watched a YouTube video. Yeah, we need a LUT, right? So then they're just going to come in here and just throw on whatever LUT they want, right? Well, now this is where the problem lies because they don't realize that they're working with two LUTs in one, right? It's stacking LUTs because we already have, we already know that Premiere automatically applies the LUT from the metadata. So now like, yeah, they're going to throw on some crazy LUT, whatever one they, they find. Okay. Granted, it probably won't be any of these like really crazy ones, but what if it is? Sometimes it is like, we don't know what they're going to choose. Right? So then they're going to go, Whoa, that looks crazy. Right? I hope anyone would look at that, but this is the problem. They're going to start grading with the one that's on there, right? Not knowing that they never once were looking at an image that was not logged to begin with, right? So now, now you got to try to work with this and try to make this look normal. I could just imagine if I was like some dude not knowing what's going on and, and, and looking at this and trying to make sense of this, right? So then you're coming down here, you're going to the color wheels. You're like, okay, okay, let's lift the midtones a little bit, right? Like imagine trying to work with this, not knowing that you're, you stacked LUTs because this is my prediction of what's going on. Please consult with your DPs guys. You know, like what I mean, like if you're producing and directing a project, Please consult with your DPs on, on how to do this. Because could you imagine trying to grade with two LUTs stacked on and you just, you know, and it's destroying the image, destroying the image. One, because the way I shoot, I like to get as close to how it's going to be on the day. That's why I take so much time with choosing the right filters and doing all the tests that I do prior to even walking onto set. And that's why I'm taking so much time with the lights and the flags and the modifiers and rags of diffusion on set, trying to lock that look in. Because I know when I go into DaVinci, I'm going to do this. So now let's jump to DaVinci. Okay, so right away, here's the same clip, right? Now look at that. We instantly see, okay, Resolve identifies R3D RAW. It, I, it knows to keep, it knows how to interpret metadata and not include the LUT. Okay, rather instead, when we pop over here to the color tab, we can go over here to the RAW tab, change this from project to clip, and if we want to, we can do it ourselves, apply creative LUT. Well, now there it is. But look, it's still not even crushing it as hard as Premiere was with the LUT already applied. This is what I'm saying. Not only is Premiere already applying the LUT from the metadata, but it also is throwing its own Rec. 709 look on top of that LUT, right? So then on top of that, the, the ignorant person or doesn't know better, they, they don't realize there's already a LUT applied, then the Rec. 709 Premiere look, then they're adding another LUT, if my predictions are true, right? Either way, it's not a proper workflow for proper color grading, especially not with RAW. What, what's the point of even shooting RAW, right? Okay, but that's the first thing. But we don't, I don't do that. I don't apply LUTs. I never use LUTs in post. I only use LUTs on the day. Let me show you how amazing DaVinci Resolve, again, this is not a color grading tutorial. This is just a starting off point because I'm not a color gradist by any means. Now, there may be some things in here that you recognize from other people, other tutorials. That's because everything I do in terms of color grading is an amalgamation of everything I've ever seen on YouTube, every class I've ever went to, a physical online, class, every single workshop I've ever been to, it's just an amalgamation. This stuff in here is nothing new, but I just kind of throw it all together and come up with my own recipe for color grading, okay? Again, this is, I'm not even going to do a full grade. I'm just showing you how I start. First thing I do in the first node, I come over here, I change radius to medium, I undo this check, and I change chroma to 10. Again, you might recognize that from a Juan Malara thing. Okay, I add a node. Now, this is the next thing I do. This is the game changer for me with Resolve with any color, uh, any camera footage. As long as it's log, you can do this. Color space transform. This is a game changer. You drop this on node two, input color space. Well, I know what it was because I because I know I shot this, right? I shot this in 6K red. Let's come down. The color, the input color space was red wide gamut RGB. My input gamma was the other one, which is red log 3G10. Now look, it's crushing it. 
but still not crushing as hard as Premiere was, right? But then also I haven't changed it yet based upon my timeline. I know my output color space is Rec. 709, but then I also know that my output gamma, I like doing Rec. 709A. Boom. Now what I'm going to do is throw a couple nodes in here, and on the last node, I drop my false color, another game changer with DaVinci. So while I'm grading throughout all these other nodes, I always keep a false color node at the end where most people put their LUT node, but I don't deal with LUTs, right? I like to do the grade myself uh, just off of the simple color space transform, right? But I keep the false color uh, uh, tool on on the last node so I can constantly monitor what's going on with my exposure, right? Um, that's what I do. That's what I do, right? And now I know I'm dealing with one, the true color space, right? I'm not looking at LUTs on top of LUTs. Da Vinci's not doing its own weird Rec. 709 flare, right? Like a, it's almost like Premiere almost has like a, a, a light Rec. 709. You know, like on GH5s, they have the light 709. I think it's called like 709 light. I swear that's what Premiere pa has. It's just, it's just standard. Even when you're looking at something log, the log doesn't look quite right. You know, um, it's just, it's just not a proper workflow in my opinion, folks. Now, look, this is a worst case scenario, but look at that. Look at that. Do you know it's like instantly clipped? It's instantly, it's, it's gone. It's gone. Now, again, I know that's a slight exaggeration, but hey, man, some of the stuff I've seen, I would not be surprised if that's what they're doing. Adding a LUT in that little thing where it says input LUT, not knowing that the, mon the, the LUT that I was monitoring with on the day is already applied. On top of that, okay, let's say they do know. Let's say they do know to go in and change it off of the metadata. At the end of the day, Premiere is still putting their own 709 light flare on it. I can, I, I know, if you don't believe me on this, just Google it. I'm telling you, this is a thing. It, it doesn't look right. It just doesn't match, man. I'm telling you, okay? Now, again, this is just a starting off point. I haven't done any grading on this at all, but this is the best place to start off with. All right, as always, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the support. And catch us next time on the Justin Phillip Podcast. <laughs>